My name is Munch Club TV and welcome to Timeline News. BBC News journalist Emily Matlis yesterday showed incredible ignorance when discussing racism in the UK versus racism in the US. Here's what she had to ask George the Poet on the matter yesterday on Newsnight. You know, you would have thought everyone was aware. But you're not putting America and Britain on the same footing. I mean, I heard that very moving, horrific account. But our police aren't armed. They don't have guns. The legacy of, of slavery is not the same. We have had a report many years ago looking at institutional racism, and you would hope reversing or aiming to open that up. It's not the same, is it? I feel like every black person in the world has had to do this face when talking about racism and having to explain to someone doing devil's advocate with our civil rights. Mental. Luckily, George is a much more composed and eloquent man than most and gave this stunning answer on just why what we face here in the UK is just as dangerous to black people as what they face in the US. Take a look. Um. If it's not the same, then you have to explain to me why Julian Cole is not an exception. What happened with Nunu Cardozo? What happened with uh, Edmund uh, da Costa? What happened with Sarah Reid, who died under very similar circumstances with Sandra Bland in the American context, right? This is contemporary. When you talk about the history of race relations, you have to consider the role of the British Empire, as I've spoken about extensively on the African continent, and the uh, political and economic consequences of that interaction. What is the situation that we're dealing with today? This is very contemporary, and I hope this is a, a, a learning point for many people who think along the lines that you just expressed, that this is an American and not a British issue. Okay. Well said, George. Hopefully they'll stop gaslighting us about racism on TV, but hey, I, what do I know? I'm just a guy in his bedroom with a green screen. I'm fucking clue. <laughs> Louis Vuitton artistic director Virgil Abloh came under fire for posting what appeared to be a $50, that's £42 in English money, donation to an American bailout program. Abloh, who shot to fame selling overpriced streetwear to losers, seemed to post the donation moments after criticising the protests because they looted his friend's vintage store. <laughs> Out of the ashes of the absolute Pamming he's received online has risen, a new slang term for the streets, a Virgil, signifying $50. So, given that he was so generous in his donation of one Virgil, how many Virgils would I need to shop on the Off White store? Let's take a look. A an Off White paperclip will set you back two Virgils, a belt that looks like you got it from TK Maxx in 1999 will set you back four Virgils, and a suitcase, which conveniently lets you know just what it's used for, will set you back a whopping 13.4 Virgils. Crikey. But look, it's not like he's a culture vulture or anything. Virgil actually hires a lot of black people at his off-white sto- oh, Hold on. What? He doesn't hire any black people. At his streetwear brand. Fucking hell. In today's segment of Yay! You ended racism! It's Salt Bay. Yes, Salt Bay can be seen here feeding a black baby, which I presume is not his, milk. Yeah. Um, so that's that's that. That is that. Salt Bay, I hope there's less salt in that bottle than there is on your tough, rubbery, overpriced steaks. Below are some ways that you can donate to people on the ground putting in work in our communities and in protests abroad. Give as many or as few Virgils as you can and remember to always do research before you do so. My name is Munch Club TV, you can follow me on all socials at Munch Club TV and I'll see you here next time on Timeline News. My girl's telling me she wants nail money. She said it's gonna cost me two Virgils. I'm like, my money. Unbelievable.